Solano, head of the Solano cartel. Ships everything north via buses. OK, so what's our play? We have two weeks. Two weeks. You need hands on that bus. Jake's is the guy who can get it done. All the drugs to the money, the money to Solano. We're about to see the drugs, the guns, everything on that bus. My guest today is a Broadway vet you probably loved in Wicked, Next to Normal, Catch Me If You Can, or on the big screen in Les Miserables. These days, he's busting bad guys on USA Network's Graceland, which just started its second season. Please welcome Mr. Aaron Tveit. What's up? Thank you for coming back. Thank you for having How me. How are you? I'm doing very well. Most important things first, your hair looks good. Thank you. Your hair looks great. Thank you. <laughs> Man, I really, I was looking at the sides. Whoever's oh, cutting thank you. It's, fre it's freshly cut. It, freshly looks, cut. it looks freshly shorn. Mine's not so freshly shorn. No, it's good though. It's Couple good. Weeks. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know like what the length was going to be. Yeah, you know, sometimes it goes short, sometimes it's long. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's like a total wild well, card. I, I think we're right in the pocket right now. This is like, this is like the good length pocket. It's good. Yeah. Um, and I, and I just watched, I, I binge watched Grace. I've been watching like, I, I, I did a whole refresher yes. of season one and I'm on season two it's now. It's a binge watchable show. It's a, oh my God, it's yeah. so good. It's yeah. so much fun. Yes. And your, your hair suddenly got short <laughs> in season two. And yeah. I was like, oh no, what's he going to look like? Yeah. Well, but I uh, filmed that a while ago. But it was so funny that uh, we, we reshot the end of the, the final episode of the first season in uh -huh. August of last year. We had been done since March. And I, afterwards, <laughs> without asking anyone, I came home and I, <laughs> I shaved all my hair off. Oh, that was that, that point. Yeah, and so, uh, and so when we went back, you know, the network was kind of like, yeah, so your hair's not long enough. So they made a little wig. And we shot, there's, in the finale of the first season, there's a, there's a, there's there a scene. There are scenes where you're wearing a wig? There's a scene, half a scene, where I have a wig on. In the final, mm -hmm. in, in the, the last final episode. episode I'm yep. going to rewatch that. I won't say what it is. How maybe noticeable you, Maybe you guys it? can, well, I can notice is it. Is it from the front? Like, it's you, from all over. And they kind oh of, halfway God. through the scene, it switches back to the original. Anyway, but then what we were able to do with the final scene of me being in Washington, that was a change, but my hair was short. And so then we could signify some passage of time and... That's how you tell story through hair. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love it. That's something to look for. I want yeah. to, to figure out what that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because now season two, well, yes. the end of season one, mm -hmm. you got promoted. That's Mike right. got promoted yep. because he was part of this huge yeah, season one took, arc. Took and all he these really, folks down. So yeah, then, he uh, took them down, yeah. shot some people. Shot a guy. Got I shot a guy. Some, uh, yeah. some beat, beaten up I got moments. beat up, stabbed. I Killed a guy. Are those fun? Is it fun to do all that? Like, I'm, well, I know there's stunt people. I'm not, I'm not, you're not tricking me. That's not all you. <laughs> a lot of it is me. Yeah? Yeah. So, okay, what's the, what's the, like, the, the scariest or the most, like, physical thing you did on Graceland so far? Um, the... And is it scary? No, it's so much fun. Yeah? It's like being a kid in your backyard and playing cops and robbers. I mean, it's, it's very, very fun. You uh, not hurt yourself? No. No. The scene towards the end of the first season where Daniel's character Briggs yeah. ends up because circumstances he has to kind of choke me out yeah yeah, and yeah. there's a whole scene where we have a fight in a in kind of a industrial area that scene and again this is kind of what we do on the show Daniel and I basically are so we have two amazing stunt guys and they do the whole thing and then Daniel and I go in and do as much as we can so the stunt guys did the whole thing what what that does is it gives especially between different parts of the fight. It gives it movement, you yeah. know, and then Daniel and I go yeah. in and do pieces. But I basically, that fight, I ended up doing all of it wow. except the little backflip that he does off yeah, the, off the fence. That, that yeah. was the scene right there. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do the backflip part, but How's the, the I did. hair on the stunt guy? The hair, he's, you know, he's got good hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny. He's actually, my stunt guy is Indiana Jones at Disney World. Oh Fun God, fact. That's awesome. And he's awesome. Because you shoot in Florida. Yeah, we shoot in Florida. And he's, Have you he's, seen him do his Indiana I haven't, trip? and I'm dying to go. You have to go I'm see dying that. to go see it. Uh, uh, Vanessa, who's on my show, plays Charlie. She's gone with her son to see it, and she said he's amazing. Yeah. So, but my stunt guy is Indiana Jones. I think that's the coolest thing. It seems kind of like a laid back, fun show to shoot. Am I wrong about that? The cast seems kind of cool. We have so much fun and I know together. you film in Florida, so maybe that just makes me automatically think that you're just like... Just hanging out. Around. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's so funny you say that. I mean, everyone's very serious. It's a very serious group of actors, but we have a blast together. And we have, uh, we have a, the, the guy who directed our pilot, he's directed, I think, he directed three episodes of first season, three episodes of second season, four episodes of first season. Uh -huh. He's kind of our resident directing producer. Okay. He, so he knows us really, really well. Uh -huh. And he was directing an episode earlier in the year, this season, it's gonna be episode six of season two, where 
we're having this very, very intense argument, all of us in the house, and we could not get through the scene because we were having so much fun and laughing, and he literally had to talk to us like we were fifth graders. He said, guys, you guys really need to calm down, and we need to work here. It's like, I know you guys like each other, but we need to have fun, so. Now, the show's on every Wednesday. Every Wednesday at 10 it's o'clock. A summer event, summer yep. event That's on right. USA. That's right. Um, but you're actually here to tell us about your new Broadway musical, right? Everyone's waiting, everyone's dying, everyone's excited. What's the new? The new Broadway musical is? Not oh man, happening. I wish. I wish. God, I, really, I wish. I wish. Hopefully, one. Ne hopefully, next time I'll be sitting here and we can do that. That'd be fun. Yeah. You think that might be happening soon? I hope so. Yeah. Do you, it's it's actually been like I was. It's almost three years. Almost three years. It'll be. Are you? This are, Labor you, Day, it'll be three years. Do you have like the itch? Do you have the itch to oh get God, up there and cannot, hear people screaming and even tell you. singing those big notes? I can't even hurting tell you your voice. How, how much I have have the itch to do this. It's, yeah. It's bad. I mean, for a while, you know. For a while after Catch If You Can't Closed, it was good to kind of to get away from it a little yeah. bit and do you know do some other stuff. I had a very busy year. Because Catch Me If You Can should still be running. It but should we're not still be go running, there. but that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm that, letting it go. That's a whole different uh, topic. <laughs> but um, no, I, I've, I, what did I see? I saw Rocky recently, and literally I sit in the audience and I want to I was going to ask you, do, do certain stage. shows make you, just, make you itchy? Oh my God. It's un, it's, do you want to play Rocky? I, I don't even, you know what I mean? I want anybody. I'm sure Andy Kroc could take a night off. Yeah. <laughs> I want to play Apollo Creed. I don't know if that'll work, though. Oh, that, that's not typecast. <laughs> that's, a, that's definitely a different direction. I always like that character. He's great in the movie, too. But no, I, have, I really have the extreme itch to jump back on stage. Yeah. yeah. But that's what was so great about the shows that I did at 54 Below last year. Right. It was, I, I missed singing so much, and it kind of really felt like an outlet to, to pour that into. So. Wow, that was like... That was a sensation done in that little. You, your fans. It was something. You have a lot of fans. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think of the term tater tot? <laughs> Might as well just get this out of the way. I'm a big fan of tater tots. I love tater tots. Tater tots I used to are eat awesome. I mean, I mean it like, was, when it was tater tot room, day at school lunch. Tater tot. Like, yes. Oh my god! Double order, mm. please. But uh, uh, so tater tots. It, is a name. It makes some, me think of tater tots. And how could you hate tater tots? It's, tater it's tots kind are of great. A, it's kind of a really great. Every time I hear it, fan name. I I smile. Well, I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad. Whoever yeah. came up with that, I'm glad you did that. Because Thank you. That's a great. It's do you a have great any job. other? Uh, are there any other names for your fans, or that just kind of covers it? I think that's about. I think and it's so it. funny because your name is just not. <laughs> no, like, my name doesn't really yeah, you lend really itself to anything Whoever like that. Whoever came up with that, I'm telling you. Hey, it's Vader Tots. Thumbs up to that. <laughs> but they packed that uh, 54 below. They did. It was really, really great. And um, I was supposed to be doing some 54 Below shows now-ish, but oh, just really? schedule stuff. But I think this fall, uh, September, October, I will be oh. I will be making a return engagement. What? Yeah. What? So that's you that's know. exciting to hear. And uh, yeah, I'm actually I'm currently working, and it'll be you know a new show. I'm currently working to put a new show or two together right now. So. Well, a hot tip to everyone out there: the minute that they announce these shows, <laughs> literally call or do whatever you have to do within like 12 seconds, <laughs> because last time. That was it. You couldn't get in. Yeah. Well, so, thank uh, you, everyone, for being so supportive. <laughs> you are also, you've been like filming a lot of movies. Like, you've been really busy. Yes, like, I've you, been You've I've not been, really been around New York. No, that much, I've been, uh, yeah, you, last year I was probably only here for five months or so of the year. This year I've been gone until a couple weeks ago and I'm about to leave again. So, yeah, I've been busy, but it's been great. I have two, two films that I shot last year that are hopefully going to be doing the festival. Circuit you okay. know, this this coming year. One is uh, this movie, Big Sky, that where I now that sounds like something really dark. That's a little dark. Yeah, it's a very much a psychological thriller. Um, you play a bad guy. I, I kind of play a bad guy. Yeah, Frank Grillo is my older brother, and Kira Sedgwick and Bella Thorne are this mother and daughter, and we kind of terrorize them a little bit. And I, uh, it's it was a, it was a lot of fun to do. We shot in the desert, in New Mexico, and so uh -huh. it looks beautiful. And it's a, this incredible Mexican filmmaker, Jorge Michael Grau, and he's. Uh -huh. uh, He's, it's his first English film. You want to do like darker things. I like you? dark stuff. Yeah, it's some um, black. You want to like, freak people out. It's like black, like my soul. You like? Do you feel like you're like fighting against like? I don't want to be a pretty boy. I want to be like a badass dark. <laughs> blah, I want well, to like attack people. Well, you know, I don't think of it. The more the way I think of it is that's the that those are the kind of movies that I like to right. watch. Yeah. So, um, and if, and it is. It's interesting to kind of delve into those dark demon places a little bit. So what's the other one? And the other one is a baseball movie. Right. So yeah, that's yeah, very yeah. fitting. Uh, called Undrafted, uh, directed and written by Joe Mazzello, uh, and it's about his brother. So it's a true story, and I play his brother, and it's really cool. 
Chase Crawford and Tyler Heckling and these, you know, great, great what guys. What I think is really cool is that you're doing uh, so many different kinds of things. Yeah. You know what I mean? You did this, like, you're doing this this weird dark, did that weird dark thriller. Yeah. You did a sports movie. Yeah, I'm playing I, this brooding doing, sports guy, yeah. You're going to do, like, a rom-com. I'm going to do a rom-com you're next. about to start filming a rom-com. Yes. So, like, you're, like, sort of, like, doing it all. It's yeah, just, and then later in the summer I'm doing kind of a John Hughes-esque 80s comedy. So it's kind of... Is that of, the Kennedy uh, thing I read Ke about? That's the Kennedy thing, yeah. Is this is based on a true story? No, it's, uh, it's about these guys... Um, Posing to be Kennedys in, in which Cape is, Cod which, in the eighties. I mean, you look like a Kennedy. I mean, it's I'm perfect. not one of the guys posing to be Kennedys. Oh, you're not. No, I'm not. How'd that happen? No. Why are you not? <laughs> no. <laughs> I just assumed like, oh, that's perfect. Of course he's. No, that. I'm actually I'm actually one of the guys who's actually who, I'm actually actually how many times can I say actually I'm one of the guys who Who's is actually really a Kennedy, not a Kennedy, but a, a socialite in the Hyannisport structure, and these guys basically get me arrested, send me to jail, and I go a little bit crazy, oh. and they're living in my house, and so I'm kind of the the bad guy. It's so cool that like there's all this Aaron Tveit, uh footage that's been shot now that will be unleashed out there. on the world it's, soon. It's out there somewhere. It's I mean, the in, whole movie scene is computers. so interesting, because you just sort of like do all these movies, and you don't know if they're, what's going to happen in a festival, if yeah. they're going to end up on demand. But you know, but demand, that's, that's what's so interesting in about, about filmmaking, I think, is, and just the kind of the nature of it now is that you, there are these great small scripts that get made for, yeah. you know, under the kind of the ind independent film wing, if you will. But you get to just work on these great scripts with these great directors and and great casts, and you just you you just put it out there, and you, you know you don't, never know what's gonna happen or what's gonna come of it. But you know, so the the nature of the business is the parts that I've gotten to play the last year or so. You know, I might not have had the opportunity to play those parts in a huge studio movie just because of mm. all the things that go along with it. So right. I've been really relishing the opportunity to play incredible parts in these smaller films. It's been great. I'm excited. I yeah. can't wait to see it all. Yeah. I hope everyone gets to see them, yeah. They'll, they'll eventually see them in some form. Yeah, something. I mean, Video on demand, you know, it could always do that if it doesn't do the festival. So, yeah, it's really cool. We all know, I mean, everyone who's watching this right now is probably very upset you're not on social media. Yes. We've covered this in the past. We, we sort of decided, since people don't have much access to you, that we're gonna, we, we are taking some questions yes. from the Tevater Tots, and maybe the more casual fans who don't identify, self-identify as yeah. Tevater Tot. Yeah. Um, so we, we did a little Instagram video. Awesome. Uh, so what we did is we had people, I'm gonna use this Broadway.com branded iPad Look mini. That. That's great. It's just a cover. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so what we're going to do is... And, you know, the social media thing, yes, we've, we've oh, spoken about, about it. How I'm not, I'm not feel, on it. Actually, I was going to ask you a question. Yeah. Did, did USA Network pressure you at all? They, they, were, they were cool about it. They I like mean, to they, get actors they on want, social they media. They wanted me to be on it, but uh, I basically explained my reasoning and, and why, and they were, they were totally cool. So, but Graceland has a huge presence yeah. on social media, Everyone, yeah. a lot of, like my cast members do. But also, you know, Aaron Tveit Net is, a, is yes. on social media, and that is, like, that is directly... Cleared, approved, approved, sanctioned through, okay. you know, for, for information. It's so a that's great a, resource. That's a great. And I and, used it to, and, to make sure I was caught up on you. And the girl who runs it is incredible. And so that's a, you know, so even though I'm not technically on social media, that is for all anything work work related. I mean, that's basically as good as. And I read that get. you are taking fan mail. Yes, I am. Some address in California. That's so right. send your fan. Or, <laughs> that's do you correct. get anything weird? Uh, I haven't really gotten too much weird stuff. I get really, really nice things. Okay, so all right, I'm excited I, for this. I have I'm, no idea what what these are going to no be. No idea. These are not approved. Aaron Tveit Net did nope. not approve nope. these. Nope. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sabrina, and I'm from Austria. Um, my question for you, Aaron, is: What was the meanest prank you ever played on your younger brother? Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk oh, about man. this. Well, my brother, my younger brother is five years younger than me, right. so it's kind of a a good age difference for terrorizing. I <laughs> this is so bad. I used to hold him down and do the thing where you. You sort of spit, let the spit drip, and then right before you suck it back up. Oh my God, you you can do that. That's yeah. disgusting. Yes. That is really Gross. like one of the most disgusting and of things. Of course, like <laughs> once out of every five times, you don't catch it and it drops right into his forehead. He said, "Oh, I was, that's really bad. That's bad, man." Do you still do that to people? I, mean, I still have to do. I still do that to my brother like during the big day. Yeah, big got a fight scene. Yeah, and maybe just try it on him. <laughs> oh man, I want to do that to Daniel now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hi, Aaron. My name's Allie. I was wondering, would you ever do drag like your former director of Rent, Neil Patrick Harris? Oh. Okay, so Neil Patrick Harris, you uh -huh. have worked with him. Yes. He did direct you in Rent. Yes. At the Hollywood Bowl, right? Yes. And he just won a Tony playing drag. He did. Would, is, would you ever do something that crazy? It's interesting. I, uh, I haven't gotten to see Neil yet in Hedwig, and I really want to. Uh, I, Hedwig's always been a show that I've thought was incredible and 
Yeah. Like relish the opportunity to do something like that. Another one that's very similar is, I guess it's not really in drag. I've always wanted to be the MC in Cabaret. Oh. Like that's a, something that's kind of always uh -huh. been been there. So yes, with the right uh, the right project, I would I would jump right into those heels. You would bear your ass for Cabaret on stage. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> so have you ever had? Have you ever been in drag? I have been in drag before. When, when did this happen? Did I know this? I don't um, know if I knew this. No. Uh, just like some fun Middletown, New York. Yeah, you know, Middletown boys, High School. Just a bunch of crazy straight just guys getting crazy, into drag. Crazy guys doing powder puff football. You know, we did that at my school. Like where the we wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You would get into drag and play football? No, it's powder puff football. You guys I, what, know what, what this is, is right? What it's is like that? the girls play football. There's like a night. Okay. It's like around homecoming time. The, the girls play football and the guys dress in drag and cheerlead. And so it was like me and all the athletes in my school, and we would all dress in drag. Yeah, it's like all the good. So you wear cheerleading outfits. Yeah, it's like all the cool straight guys dressed up in cheerleading outfits. And uh, were you pretty? As a pretty girl? I was terrible. Really? Was, oh, God. It didn't work? No, I had really <laughs> muscular legs. They did not look good, cute in a skirt with fishnets. <laughs> it just didn't go well. And there's no photos of this that you can share? Oh, my goodness. I don't know. Somewhere, I, I somewhere upstate I New York, there might be Somebody, photos. One of my friends probably has it in the you know. See, a thank box God somewhere. there wasn't Instagram then. See? Oh, See, this is why. Don't even get me started with that. <laughs> thank God there was no Instagram when I was 18 years old. <laughs> Yeah. It would have been awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Hi, Aaron. I'm Aaron. I have to talk really fast because it's only 15 seconds in an Instagram video. But if anyone has seen you in any show or Graceland or any musical, because you're always shirtless, they know you're super in shape. So I want to know what you think the best workouts for vocalists are because my voice teachers told me not to do aerobics. Okay. Now, this blew my I mind. I just said many things. I didn't know. He did say a lot. I didn't know that a voice teacher would recommend you don't do aerobics. I'm surprised by that, too. <laughs> just, yeah. So he yeah. wants to know your workout. Uh, Does singing have anything to do with working out? Well, I mean, I guess you got to... Stamina. You got to have your... Yes. I, I uh, speaking of singing and working out, when I was getting ready to do Next to Normal, I would literally go to the gym and sing on the live on the treadmill. Well, because... Because okay. I had to run up and down three flights of stairs, yeah. and there was the only way I could... Get and my sing that, and, sing that. That and appear shirtless. Yes. So you have to make sure you're working out everything at once. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but uh, no, that's I've I've never heard that. In fact, I've had voice teachers that have encouraged you to go work out and um, sing on the treadmill. Sing on the treadmill. Actually, yeah, that was a tip that I got from my voice teacher. Yeah, I've to heard go that. do it. So uh, and you know, as far as staying in shape, you have to stay in shape. It's just it's part of it. And uh, I just but I you know, I try to constantly vary my workouts. I get bored, so that's why I play a lot of sports too. That was one of the few boys that submitted questions. And his name was Aaron, too. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Some of the names, some of the username's are like Aaron Tveit, Trader Tots. Oh, so they just call. Their name really isn't so Aaron So along Tveit. those lines, this is from I Love Aaron Tveit. Oh, I thought that was just a coincidence. Hi, Aaron. I'm Miranda. And I'm Michael. And um, our question for you is, out of all the shows you had done on Broadway, uh, which show caused you the most stage fright? And why? Um, thank you, and hope you answer our question. We're huge fans. Love you. Wow, that's, that's cute. Really... They're both cute. Very cute. That's a great stage fright. That's a great question. I think hairspray because it was my Broadway debut. I yeah. remember, I remember going to see my parents and a bunch of family were eating at a restaurant before the show, and I remember my mom. She was really concerned because I must have had been white. I went in just to see them, and I was kind of. I think I was kind of zoned out, and she kind of pulled me aside and she said, "Are you okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm okay." But I think that was probably the, the biggest stage fright I had, even though I had done the show for a year at that point on right. the road. But coming to New York and kind of doing it for the first time in New York, I think that was probably the scariest I ever was. Right. Hi, Aaron. My question to you is, if you had to pick one thing to get tattooed onto your body, what would it be and where would you put it? Oh, good question. Do you have any tattoos? I have no tattoos. I've been, I've been going back and forth about getting a tattoo for a long time. Oh, really? Yeah. What, what have you thought about? Two things. One... Okay. Um, one thought that I have is to put a bar of music, um, but if somebody, I, I, w I would want to find an, a tattoo artist that could make it that, unless you were really looking at it, you couldn't tell that it was music. So kind of an artistic huh, take okay. on it. Would it be a specific piece of music? In that, I would think so, but I don't know what the music okay, would be well, yet. That's, so that's I mean, probably why I haven't forever. permanently got it. And this, <laughs> this other tattoo idea that I have recently is of a bluebird. And the reason is because it's one of the old sailor tattoos, like one of the original tattoos that sailors used to get. And they used to get, a, and I think, I think it's where the bluebird on my shoulder comes from. Oh. It's a luck thing that after a sailor would, would travel 5,000 miles at sea, he would get a bluebird on his chest. And then another 5,000, he would get another one. So oh, wow. I kind of, you know, because I fashioned myself to be kind of a traveling man with uh, 
all the work that I have to do all over the place. I, like I think a blue bird would be nice. But I've always thought kind of right in there. I when I did rent the Hollywood Bowl, I had these kind of awesome tattoos, and my favorite one was just the one that was right there. So, uh -huh. yeah. Hi, Aaron. Who is your celebrity crush? Thanks. Oh. Cute. She's adorable, Cute. and she wants to know who your celebrity crush is. I have I, uh, Jennifer Lawrence is my celebrity crush. Oh, she's awesome. She's awesome. She's so good. She have seems, you met her? I've never met her. She was in the front row of the Oscars when I sang. I was trying to send, I was trying to send vibes towards is her. That, so so when we were all watching her the Oscars, that's who you were that's what you were focusing on. <laughs> she sent Jennifer Lawrence vibe. <laughs> I came, well, <laughs> I came out when I was stage left. Daniel Day Lewis and Robert De Niro were sitting there, and I was like, Daniel Day Lewis, Robert De Niro, Daniel Day Lewis, Robert De Niro. <laughs> but then when I went around the other stage, the other side of the stage was Jennifer Lawrence, and I'm, I was a little more settled by that point. But <laughs> she's she's great. She's hilarious. She's great. Yeah. Hi Aaron, I'm Talita, and here is Sueli. <laughs> It's vertical in Brazil, and you, we want to know if you like soccer and uh, what the game is of the, your team. Oh okay, I just, I just want to say you have a lot of international fans. Like that's one thing I found out from this. Yeah, all over the world. That's so. Is I that mean, a that must be a Les Mis thing? I think so. Yeah, like Les Mis, Les Mis went kind of sort has of a worldwide everywhere. appeal. Yeah, but Graceland, I think too is all over. Yeah, I think yeah they they played that all over the world. I am watching the World Cup. I love. I, was I played say. soccer in high school. Okay. Uh, so yes, I've been watching it very closely. Uh, I'm rooting for USA, but I also. I also like the Netherlands. I like that team. I'm a big uh -huh. Robin Van Persie guy. When I was shooting Les Mis in, <clears throat> in London, I rooted for Arsenal when he was on the team because I uh -huh. watched a lot of soccer when I was there. So, yeah, I'm a big, big soccer fan. Are you playing any sports now? Right now, uh, just a, a little bit of softball, but schedule is kind of permitting that. Right. Um, and a little bit of basketball, same thing. Cool. And golf. That's what I'm oh, doing. Right, all, all of my time, all of my time not spent working right now is I golfing. Forgot. Where do you golf? Where do you go to golf? Uh, all over. I go, you know, the course, the New York City courses, and pop up towards my parents. And you golf and like in Florida when you're in doing Florida, Graceland, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Aaron. My name is Damie, and my question is: Are your teeth naturally white, or did you bleach them? Thanks. <laughs> That's a very personal question. My teeth, you don't have to. My teeth are naturally white. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I try to practice good dental hygiene. You're known for your teeth. You have yeah. a, you have a I have big teeth. I have, yeah. yeah, big white teeth. Big teeth. Yeah. Um, so tell us about your your. your dental. Well, I had I had braces from seventh grade till my senior year of high school. I got my brace I got my braces off the day of my senior prom. So when you did that powder puff, when you were the drag, you, oh, you were a drag cheerleader braced. and full braces. Full braced, yeah. Instagram, why did full Instagram Full braced exist? with a full middle part. I mean, it was, you know, <laughs> it's like 1997 here we're talking about. It was like, it was time. It was the times. But, um, <clears throat> well, they no. worked. They worked well. Yes. I, and ever since, I mean, my mom literally, she will say, it's time for your dental appointment. You know, I, I still go to the dentist every six months. She, she's like, we paid a lot of money for those braces. Don't, don't mess them up. A lot of actors have to get their teeth. Redone, but I, uh, you know, what? one thing I have to say while on the on the subject of mental hygiene, one thing I have started to doing in the last couple of years that I never did before is floss. Okay. Yep. There's a comedian, uh, Mitch Hedberg, that used to say, "Friends of mine tell me that I don't know how how hard it is to stop smoking." He says, "Yes, I do. It's as hard as it is to start flossing." <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to start flossing, but I fl I floss too. You use those little like flossers with the like. No, I do full arms. full just, out, regular, like real old deal. School. My teeth are too big for the flossers. Oh really? I bust them. Yeah. <laughs> you just like dig in there. With I the... like you know the ones that are like that. I put them up and they just break. So I have to, <laughs> I have to do the old, <laughs> the old guy. Twice a day. Once a day. Once a day. Yeah. Morning. Evening. Evening. Okay. Get mm -hmm. the dinner. Get the dinner out, out of yep. your teeth. <laughs> What's up, Aaron and Paul? How you doing? My name is Julia, and I'm from Utah. Um, so who's your favorite superhero? Oh, man. Why not? Why not? Superhero. Wow. Um, Bat Batman was always my guy because he didn't have That's any superpowers. He was That's just my a, guy. He was, he was just a man right. with a deep voice. But um, I think superhero-wise, uh, with we're talking real powers now, I this is such an obscure one, but I loved the Silver Surfer when I was a kid. Oh, okay. I used to have Marvel, uh, ma like the Marvel cards, like the trading cards with all the superheroes on them. And on the back, they had attributes, you know, like uh -huh. based out of 10 for strength and dexterity and agility and all these things. And I loved the Silver Surfer because he's a, he's a demigod. And so all of his attributes were N.A., just off the charts. So I was like, <laughs> I'm going to be that guy. He's just awesome at everything. He flies on a cool surfboard. 
Do you, you know what else is awesome? Is there isn't one? Or there's not like a movie yet. No, there's no. So you could do movie. it. That's right. Let's you want to do that? Surf is, that sure. is that we're putting it out there? Let's go. We're putting it out there. Let's do it. Would it make a good movie? I uh, probably not. I don't really know him no. that well. He's a demigod. Does he look Nothing like? Do you help. look like him at all? How no, he's he? he's a, he's a, like a he looks like the guy from Terminator when he's like molten metal. Oh yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> well, anyone could play him. Yeah. <laughs> now we gotta see you. Yeah. All right, a couple more. Hi, Aaron. It's Corinne from New Rochelle, New York, and my question to you is. What career would you have if you were not an actor? Thanks. Bye, Aaron. Bye, Paul. Um, well, when I was a kid, I wanted to be the third baseman of the Yankees, but that didn't that didn't pan out. Um, I don't I don't know. That's you know that's something that up until that I could never answer before. Um, but I think I've read a lot of I, I, I suffered from some from for some from some food allergies, and so the last couple of years I've been reading a lot more about nutrition and and uh, how we eat, and so I. But for the and I'm really kind of fascinated by it, and I've read a lot of books on it. So, I think for the so I, I maybe would be a nutritionist. Wow. Yeah, that's kind of a it's a new thing. That's a new thing. That's a the last couple of years. I've, what What is your nutrition? What do you eat? Um, this, are you extremely healthy? Yeah, I try. I mean, I've always been of the mindset, you know, people go crazy with what they eat. I try to eat good all the time, so that if I want something that's maybe not so good, I have it and I don't think okay. twice about it. That's kind of my basis. What for, was like the last like ball out? Big disgusting meal you ate that you should have eaten. I love French fries, man. Sometimes you just gotta a big plate of just them. gotta knock out some French fries. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> but, like, Salt them like up. From, like what kind? There's a lot of different kinds of French fries. Like what do you, what do yours look like? I really like sweet potato fries. Oh, yeah, that's okay. But those are a little more healthy. That's I a guess. little healthy. But um, no, <laughs> like thin. No, I like the big. I like big wedge fries. Yeah. Wedge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or curly fries. Arby's curly fries. Get out of town, Arby's. man. Curly fries. Those are the shit. That's what they're going to start sending you. That's right. To the fan mail address, <laughs> AaronTevate.net. There you go. Cold Arby's Cold curly Arby's fries. Cold Arby's curly fries. It's disgusting. How do you sing that high? How do you do it? Oh, my God. How do you do it? Actually... You just saw the video, the point that he does, and the way that he furls his thing. That's it. Just the point. That's it. That's it. That's all it takes. That's it. The point. That's it. <laughs> when did you first hit your first big note on stage and go like, <laughs> "Wow, I just did that," and make people like, um, like what show was it? I don't know. Uh, you did shows in school, I right? I did shows in school. Yeah. What was the first time you like? Hit in that? fourth grade, I was in chorus. Right, we all joined chorus in fourth grade. And I remember my chorus teacher telling me to sing louder. Okay. That's the first right. response I ever remember getting from anyone about singing. Um, but like big, a big note, probably, what, probably when I did West Side Story my junior year, because that was like, you know, right. for real singing. Right. And kind of hitting those Maria notes was finally like the first time I was like, oh, okay. Right. But... Um, I get so nervous when people I like are on stage singing and they have to hit those notes. Because, yeah. like, when I saw you sing Goodbye recently yeah. Yeah. at Carnegie Hall oh, yeah. uh, for the Mark Shame and Scott Whitman mm -hmm. evening, which was awesome. And, like, I was literally like, uh, I get so nervous. It's exciting. So I'm like, That's what makes it exciting, I can't even though, right? wrap my head around how hard it is to do. Well, you know, and especially with that song, what was Goodbye so. Goodbye from Catch Me If You Can. Exciting is on a night to night basis, I kind of never knew by that point because I had done so much before. Yeah. Kind of. How much I was gonna have left in the tank? Right. So it was, it was just as exciting for me because I kind of never knew. <laughs> <laughs> have you had it in you? You would just like push really. Just yeah, like... yeah. Sometimes, some days it would just pop right out. Some days I would really have to. And back to the question. So, I mean, point. it's a lot of. That was the answer. Point. It's a lot of <laughs> technique. Yeah. But I mean, and some days I would really have to ground myself and connect to the floor and make sure I'm breathing deep and make sure my throat, my larynx is dropped. You know, I mean, it's all very technical right. things. But other days it would just pop right up. So it hmm. just it depends on the day. I'm but, gonna do it just by pointing. I'm yeah, gonna, but if you just point and do that, just, if you if you when you see the video, the kid had it, he's yeah, got it, man. He did it. Yeah. He did it. He seems really upset about the fact that you can do that. <laughs> uh, and here's our final one. It might sound kind of silly, but could you sing the thong song for us? I heard you say in an interview that you sing that in the shower, and I've been dying to hear it. So could you do that? And bonus points if you act like you're in the shower while you're singing it. You know. Scrub, scrub and stuff. Okay, well, we don't need props here. Right. Uh, so, uh, if you just maybe just give a little, fl little flavor. Go, baby, make your booty go da 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 da. Girl, make your body go da 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 da. Let me see that thong. <laughs>
Thank you so much. The animated GIF, I feel, I feel like the animated GIF of that was <laughs> already created before, as you were doing it. Exactly. I feel like it's on the web right now already. <laughs> and I, I just shared it. Thank, thank you, you guys, those were really awesome questions. Yeah, thank you everyone yeah. for doing that. I can't believe I just th sang the thong song. So what do we want to leave people with? Uh, you're going to be on Broadway hopefully soon. Hopefully soon, yeah. Everyone be patient. He'll be back when I'll he's on back. Broadway. Yeah. Um, and Graceland is on. Graceland is on USA. right now. USA. Wednesdays. Wednesdays at 10. 9 Central. 9 Central. If you're in Central. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to see you on Broadway. But for now, I'm glad to see you on TV. Yes, every thank week. you. Sometime very soon. But thank you guys for And everything. thank you for singing the thong song. That was <laughs> I can't amazing. believe that just happened. That's going to be can. swell. <laughs> swell. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Paul. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.